And I give God myself. Go back over to John. We, we read this last week, but it, 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 I'm going to connect something here. John chapter 4. And because David was worshiping every six paces, every time he got in the flesh. See, every time your flesh start acting up, something needs to die. Yeah. Something. Okay, thank you for the three amen. Let me say that again. Every time your flesh starts acting up, something has to die. Something needs to die. Because it is your flesh that is keeping God out of your house. Amen. And I'm not talking about your building house. I'm talking about this house. So David got a revelation that every time we step into the number of man, we're going to kill something because we don't want the flesh to hinder God from coming back to the house. Okay. John 4, 24. Jesus said, God is a spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in what? Spirit, spirit and in truth. We talked about that. We talked about that truth is aletheia in the Greek. It means that the appearance of a thing has to be real inside and out. What I portray out here has to be true in here. I can't be a, a hypocrite, a stage performer out here, and then there's something totally different going on in my heart. That's, that's what a hypocrite is, a stage performer. So if I'm going to worship him in truth, that means that what's on the outside has to line up with what's on the inside. There are a lot of people that are faking it. Yeah perpetrating a fraud, playing like there's something out here, but inside there's a contradiction to what they're, they're showing people. That's where discernment comes in. So we understand that God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. How do I worship God in spirit and in truth? Go to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, verse number one. Are y'all okay? Are you breathing? Yes. Okay. Romans 12 and 1. Amen. Therefore, I urge you, brethren, who? Brethren. brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies. Who body? Your bodies, a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. If I'm presenting my body to God as a living sacrifice, that is my spiritual service of worship. How do you present yourself as a sacrifice to God? You got to be willing to die to everything that will separate you from God. I beseech you, brother, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable unto God. What does holy mean? Holy means set apart. It means other. So if I'm going to truly worship God, then I got to give him a living sacrifice. What is the living sacrifice? I am. Yeah. See, God does not delight in dead things. Right. In the past, they brought dead animals and put them on the altar and God accepted it. But when Jesus came, guess what? Jesus wiped every animal off the altar. Right. Every animal off the altar. Remember the, 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 the quote Jesus gave, if you have an art in your heart against your brother, leave your gift at the altar. Guess what? He wasn't talking about your tithe and offering. He was talking about your sacrifice. Leave your sacrifice on the altar and go get it right with your brother and, and, and operate forgiveness and then come back and offer your sacrifice and God will forgive you. But if you can't forgive your brother, who you see every day, God not going to forgive you. So the prerequisite for me being forgiving is to forgive. So we understand that when Jesus came, he wiped all animals off of the altar, offered himself a sacrifice. And now God is saying that if you really want to worship me, you got to present your body a living sacrifice, holy, set apart, and acceptable unto me, which is your reasonable service or your reasonable spiritual worship. Well, that seems like that's easy, but let me tell you, it's not as easy as what it seems. How do I sacrifice myself, but yet I'm alive? How do I give God me in a fashion that he accepts me, but yet I'm very much alive? Because I don't have to die a literal death because Jesus did that. And so what God is saying, he's saying, present your body a living sacrifice, meaning that there has to be a death to your own desires. There has to be a death 
to your own ambitions. That there, there has to be a death to the things of this world so you can live a life unto God that glorifies God and that is acceptable by God. Living sacrifices are individuals that have basically turned their back to the world and offered themselves unto God and they have allowed God to sever or cut everything out of their lives that will disconnect them from God. Do I have any living sacrifices in here? How many know that it costs you something to walk with God? I know the new message now says that God just accepts everybody the way they are and he really don't even require change. That's the new ox that's out, the new cart that's out. But Jesus said, unless you take up your cross and follow after me. You gotta, he said, you got to deny yourself. He said, unless you hate your mother, father, sister, brother, mother, daughter, cousin, aunt, uncle. What was he saying? Uh, unless you place me above those relationships. He wasn't saying literally hate them. But he said, unless you place your relationship with me above all of that stuff, then I don't accept you. Because I have to be the one on the throne of your heart. I'm not sharing it with somebody else or something else. And so if I'm going to really live a life of worship, I have to understand that I have to present my body a live sacrifice to God. Die sometime to your own dreams. Die to your own ambition, your own goals. Because very few people say, God, what do you want? We, we know what you want, but what does God want? We know how you would do it, but how does God want it done? We know your pursuit would be to satisfy self, but w what is God telling you to pursue? Because what he wanted you to pursue in the previous season may not necessarily be what he wants you to pursue in this season. Amen. And I'm amazed how many people just do stuff and don't even consult the heart of God. When we saw the earthquake yesterday that killed over 1,500 people, and there were people there on the mountain that died that were skiing leisure. One of the, the big exec executives from Google died out there enjoying itself, but the earthquake uh, triggered an avalanche, and everything started coming down, and he ended up losing his life. How, how many people really even ask God? Is this for this season? Is this something that you're releasing me to do? Or do we just do what seems right in our own heart and don't even consult the heart of God? Because God knows the earthquake was coming. Or did God put stumbling blocks in the way and people override the stumbling block? You, you got to understand that there are two times when things will not come together. One is when the devil is fighting you with everything that he has to stop you. And another one is when God is trying to put angels in your path to slow your tail down because you get ready to go into a situation that can be detrimental to your life. And we got to have the wisdom to discern when God is trying to slow you down. But you won't have that kind of discernment if you have not yielded your body to be a living sacrifice unto God. We're, we're always do things that you remember we talked Wednesday night about people not making decisions by the Holy Spirit but making decisions based on reasoning how many know when it comes to the things of God your reasoning don't have a place because your reasoning will talk you out of the will of God your reason will be saying go left when God is saying go right and this is what happens when we get caught up in our emotion we try to reason with life and reason with God. And he said, no, I'm not reasoning with you. I've given you the path to take. Amen. And so we have to be spirit led and not emotionally led because emotions will lead you up and away. Anytime you get caught up in your emotions, you get ready to go up and away from the will and the plan and the purposes of God. Y'all understand that? Yes. I just feel some type of way. That's the dumbest statement you can make. Because he never told you to be led by how you feel. He said be led by the spirit of God if you really want to be a son of God. So it's not about how you feel. Well, they hurt me. Get over it. We get hurt every day. Yes. I can't let hurt lead me. Amen. Because hurt going to lead me into a situation that's going to comfort me but not going to challenge me to get delivered from hurt. Right. See, hurt has a leash. And it will lead you into areas that God has not ordained for your life. That's why you can't hold on to offense. Yes. Offense will never let you go. You have to let it go. Yes. 
Because you'll be led by how you feel and you'll totally miss out on the will of God if you're not having presented your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. You got to lay it down. Worship is laying it down. Worship is more than bowing down. It's laying, laying it down. Amen. Are you with me? Yes. Go to Genesis chapter 8. I'm, I'm vacillating in and out of worship and sacrifice. I'm, work, I'm, going, I'm going to show you today the difference between worship and just sacrificing something God gave us. Ah, Lord. Let, let, let me let, just, just keep your finger there. Genesis 8, say that. But I, I got to deal with this because when it comes to me presenting my body as a living sacrifice, that's not about what God gave me. That's about what I've accumulated. That's about what I've acquired. And God asked for me to lay that stuff down. The struggle is not what God has given us. The struggle is what we have accomplished and God is asking for. Yeah. The, the struggle. See, this is the thing. Go, go there. Go there. Go, 8 and 20. Let, let me read this. 